Okay, good morning everyone. Bruch HaMavoyim. We have a very special shir today. An epic shir. By the way, the word epic became a yeshivish word. It used to be like a sophisticated English word. Now it's a yeshivish word. Okay, now this shir is going to be about the solar eclipse. So it's going to get out there. So we're going to start with a very important service, uh, public service announcement. Um, now I was invited to speak at a Sheva Brachos. And the person said, you know, my husband knows about uh, this shul and this shul, nobody could bring a phone in. So for all you out there who might be listening, I want to give you Eitza Toiva Kamash Malan. When you go into a Beis HaKnesses, the first thing you need to make sure, more important than bringing your tefillin in, is leaving your phone out. So this way you're able to get signals. You know, you want to send your signals all the way up. Today we're going to talk about solar eclipse and I'm going to talk about if you're allowed to look at the solar eclipse. It's not Mishnah Pashat. La halacha, that you're allowed to look at it. Why? Now the first thing is, do you make a bracha if you see a solar eclipse? What bracha do you think you would make? L'chayra oisa masabreshes. L'chayra oisa masabreshes. Avram, you were in Gibraltar, right? You made oisa masabreshes? On where the... Uh, did you make the bracha? Asha Asa Hayama Gadol? Where the Mediterranean meets the Atlantic. So Mimanavshach, right? You get the you get the bracha. Did you make any Oisamasa Brachas? No. Because there you know for sure it's the Yamagadal. But usually if you see a, a great physical phenomenon, you make the bracha Oisamasa Brachas. So look in the Shulchanach. Shulchanach gives a few examples. Allah Zikim. If you see Zikim, what are Zikim? Zikim are Vuhu Kamin Koichav. If you have a star that shoots like an arrow, a shooting star, on a shooting star, you make an oisam asabrashas. The nimshach oirei keshevet, if the light is drags like a rod. Anybody ever see a shooting star? Rabbi Yachnes, Rabbi Nisim Yachnes saw a shooting star. Where? In a makayim. Have I seen a shooting star? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> also, via ra das haaretz, on an earthquake, you make oisam like asabrashas. Tachkadei dibor. Yeah, the dibor has to be tachkadei dibor. The thing is... You don't know. Yeah, I didn't know what it was on Friday. I, I, I was praying for it. I was pretty sure after it happened, there was an earthquake. But if you're in the middle of an earthquake, I was pretty sure after it happened, there was an earthquake. But if you're in the middle of an earthquake, next time be equipped. Oisam asabrashas. Okay? You heard it here. What's today's date? Chaf Ches Nisan Tavshin Pei Dalet. Earthquake, you make Oysa Masa What about the aftershock? I don't know. I heard that only in Lakewood they felt the aftershock. Yeah? I, I didn't feel the aftershock because by, during the earthquake I was standing upstairs in the middle of the house. It was very vulnerable. At 6 p.m. I was giving a shear about the meaning of the earthquake. I was in my office. It's the office is part of the house, it's built on concrete. I, I managed to not feel anything. Anyway, Valhar Brakim. And on lightning. Valhar Elmim and thunder. Val Rucha Shanashu Bazaf, a hurricane wind. A hurricane wind. One time, my next door neighbor had a, had a trampoline. And the hurricane wind took the trampoline and blew it into my backyard. I'm not saying who, which neighbor it was. Yeah? But. <laughs> Under that trampoline was a hornet's nest, a beautiful hornet's nest. Really? And I came out, I was, I was in my back part, I saw the hornet's nest, and I, I took it, and I have it, I preserved it. Maybe I'll show it to you. Okay, it was under the trampoline. If you see a hurricane wind, you make oisamas abrashas. I'll call echad me'elu oimar barachat ha'ashem l'kin ma'chaylam oisamas abrashas. V'em yirtza yoimar, if you want, you could say, but the Iker Bracha is Oysa Masabrashis, and if you want, you could say Shekoychai Ugvarasa Mali Oilam. Our minhag is on lightning, we say Oysa Masabrashis, and on thunder, you say Shekoychai Ugvarasa Mali Oilam, but they're interchangeable. Okay, the question is what Bracha do you make on an eclipse? The Macha, conspicuously absent from the list of uh, unusual phenomena are a solar eclipse. Why didn't the Mechaber say that you uh, a solar eclipse? The question is, are these examples davka or are they just representative of unusual phenomenon 
but really it would apply to any unusual phenomenon. That's the Shaila. If you look in Chavis Havavis, Chavis Havavis points out, he observes the fact that regular, ordinary things people don't get excited about. For example, we don't get excited about sunrise and sunset, or when you see a star, or when you see the moon, or when the rain falls, or when the wind blows. But people get very excited about what? Kekadrus Hashem Shayrech, a solar or lunar eclipse. Habrakim, lightning, Vahara'amim, thunder, Vahazikais, and shooting stars. Vasar and storm. So interestingly, Chavos Havavis groups eclipses with all the other phenomena that you do make a bracha on. So maybe you would say that you should make a bracha on a solar eclipse. So there's a sefer called Shar Ha'ayin. Either one. Yeah, we had um, a lunar eclipse, if I'm not mistaken, in 2018 and 2019, both on Tu you ready for this? According to the Yat Neman on August 18, 2017, by the way, the last solar eclipse was Erev Rosh Chodesh Elo. Elo, yeah. Uh, um, he brings over here, states in the Yat Neman that the next solar eclipse, he wrote this six years ago, April 8, 2024, that's still correct. The next two lunar eclipses will be Tu Bishvat. 57, 2018 and Tubishvat 2019. What's the connection between Tubishvat and lunar eclipses? I missed that one. I have no idea. Can't go back in time. I don't think I have any, any material on that. Okay, there's a Sefer Shar Ha'ayin of Rebellio Ariel. He was asked, Yeshul his topic number three, Im Hadvarim Shoskub Shochanach Kibrakim Uraimim Ruchais Vachadoy Mehim Davka. Is it dafka those, th oh, those things? Oishem dugma, or maybe it's just an example. V'yei shlevarech gam al reiyas shar toifois teva ma'ireres plia. Or you should make a bracha on any other unusual physical phenomenon that really inspires wonderment. Meaning, do you make oisem asverishes al har goash pihis partsusai volcanic eruption? Anyone ever see a volcanic eruption? Rebnisim, you didn't see. It? No? Okay. Ma'aras Natifim. What's a Ma'aras Natifim? Dripping caves. You know what a dripping cave is? You ever go to Howe Caverns? When I was a kid, I was in upstate New York near Cooperstown. Is, uh, the dripping caves are stalactites, stalagmites, you know? When you have um, rocks, that water drips down, it looks like the stone is dripping down. So maybe you should make a bracha on that. Pritzas geyser. Do you make oisam aspirations on Old Faithful? Mapoli mayim on waterfalls. Likoi chama olavana. Eclipses. Keshas al mapal. Or a rainbow by a waterfall. What do you do? In all of these situations, do you make a bracha or do you not? They're not mentioned in the Shulchan Aruch. Do you only make a bracha on what's mentioned? Or are those just examples? So the first thing was, the, um, the, the question was asked to Rav Vazner, the Shevet HaLevi. In the Shara Ayin number 4, Shulchan Aruch, Simon Reish Chav Zayin, Huvu Kamad Varm Shem Mavarach Malam Oysim Asabreshis. And there are many things not mentioned, like a volcanic eruption or a solar eclipse. Says Rav Vazner, the reason why the Mechaber did not talk about a volcanic eruptions is because there were no volcanic eruptions in Tzfas. In Israel, there are no volcanic eruptions. Har Hamoriya never had lava pouring out of it. The Chermon never had lava pouring out of it. So the Shulchan Aruch doesn't have to talk about it. So then, okay, so he had the guts to ask, and if somebody would go to, uh, you know, the Galapagos, what? Iceland. Iceland, the Galapagos. If you see a volcanic eruption, do you make a bracha? Avada, pshita, yeah. What about an eclipse? Says Rav Vazner, The truth is, the Gemara talks about eclipses many times. But to make a bracha, it's not clear. Yes, I'm going to give you an example soon. Yeah, good. I would say, you ready for this? It's a chiddush, but it's pashat. According to Rav Vazner, you're not allowed to look at a solar eclipse. 
It's us, sir. You're not allowed to. You're not allowed to put yourself in a situation where you don't know whether you make a bracha on it or not. Are you allowed to eat a food if you don't know what bracha it is? Not posh it. You have not, don't eat it. No, okay, so you have a shahakal to cover it. But if you know the eclipse is occurring, but you're just not looking. Okay, you don't have to, you don't have to. That's not, then for sure, then you're not going to make a bracha. But you're now, to, you're now to look, and now you're in a matzav that you don't know what to do. According to Abuzner, right, you have to look for uh, some way to cover. In other words, you need to, you need to, right, you could look at the eclipse if you go to volcano. Or you need to manufacture thunder and lightning. You need to go to a place with thunder and lightning or shooting stars. According to Abuzner, the only way it's permitted, I mean, I think this is a chiddush, nobody knows it, but people have been spending uh, years of their life investing and go to the eclipse. But according to Abuzner, you're not allowed to look at it. Yeah. Isn't the whole concept of like the eclipse, it's a simon, it's a simon Okay, good. So therefore, why would you make a bracha on that? Okay, good. But I'm just saying, uh, right now, Reb Vosner says he's not sure if you make a bracha. So if you're not sure, you're not to put yourself in a situation where you're not sure. I mean, if you saw it, if let's say you were tied down, and put, they put toothpicks in your eyes, and you, and you saw it, so now you don't know what to do, and now you're misupik. But you're not to put yourself in the situation, so the purpose of this year is to legitimize that which many people have devoted many months of their life to prepare for this event. What should they do in light of the fact that I would say, according to Rav Vosner, you cannot look at the eclipse. You're not, you know, you're not to put yourself in a situation. Let's say there's a food at a Kiddush and you don't know what bracha it is. What should you do? You should ask a paisek. What should you do if even after that you don't know what bracha to make? It's a good question. Are you... Maybe that's only if you're very hungry. Stam, I want to eat something. I don't know what bracha to make. But anyway, in any event, that's if you have a shahakal. There's no shahakal. There's no shahakal for eclipse shahakal. So, so even if you don't look at it, but you experience it, it's also not considered part. You have to specifically... You want to know, do you need to look at it, or is it... No, no, it's going to be night, right? Right, you, you know that it's occurring. Chari, you don't make a bracha. Right. The bracha would warn, if you see it, you're misspoiled by seeing the phenomenon of the orb of the sun being blocked by the moon. So the first sheet of Rav Vazner is, it's a suffix bracha. But Rabbi Daniel is mentioning that the Gemara in Sukkah says that uh, an eclipse is caused by four Averois, either an Av Bezdin that was not eulogized properly, or if a, a woman who was engaged to be married was violated, or Mishkav Zachar, or if two brothers were killed together. So L'Chaira, that means a solar eclipse shows the Simen Ra. So they asked, um, the stipler, what do you do on, with a solar eclipse? The stipler says, Alikoi chama loy mevarchem. You don't make a bracha. This is what the stipler said in Shvat Tavshin Mem. What's Tavshin Mem? 1980. But these are predetermined dates. Yeah. So how, if these eclipses were done, even though maybe there was an Arbit, I don't understand, the various were. <laughs> you went to a wedding Wednesday night. <laughs> Good question. Rabbi Yosef wants to know how could uh, eclipse mean that we did an Avera if it's uh, predetermined? It's said in the Yated. Six, the Yated said. You can see in the Yated Neman from six years ago. It said exactly when the eclipse was going to be. So how could it be tied to our Averas? So one answer the Shlach Kader says is even though it's predetermined, Hashem, who predetermined it, knew to predetermine it at a time that there would be chatam. That's one answer. Okay. They asked Reb Chaim Knievsky. They said in the Archas Rabbeinu, on page Sadi Hey, it brings that the stipler said that we're not mavarich on Aliko Chama. Why? So the questioner says, my understanding is because we don't find in Chazal that they were Masaki in a bracha. But you have to understand, why weren't Chazal Masaki to make a bracha on a solar eclipse? Isn't it a Shinoi Seder Masabracious? Says Reb Chaim Knievsky, Ki Enoi Simen Taiv. A solar eclipse is a bad omen. It means we are not uh, behaving correctly. By the way, on Wednesday night we learned 
that the solar eclipse reflects that there's a lack of Kayach HaToyra in the world. We don't love the Toira enough. We don't love Tamideh Chachamim. We don't support Toira. And we're not active enough for Toira. So since it's a Simen Ra, you do not make a bracha, says Reb Chaim Knievsky. But still, I'm not really uh, so satisfied over here. Because according to Reb Vazner, it's a Suffolk. According to Reb Chaim, you don't make a bracha. It's still a Suffolk bracha. So you, you shouldn't look at it. Earthquakes and all these other phenomena are also bad. No. No, no, earthquake is not bad. On Shal Shudas, the Gemara in Bracha says, on Daphnon Tess, that the cause of an earthquake is that when the Jewish people are suffering in the Gullahs, Hashem cries, He shakes the world, and He tells Kal Yisrael, I feel your pain, and I'm going to bring you back to Eretz Yisrael. So according to that, an earthquake is a simon toiv. Okay, now, look at number 13 in the Shar HaAyin. Hagoyin Reb Chaim Knievsky, um, I heard from Reb Chaim Knievsky, that the reason you don't make a bracha on an earthquake is Ein lanu elamasha tiknu chazal. A different reason. We only make a bracha on what chazal legislated and they never legislated on a solar eclipse. And he says, I heard this from other G'daylam. But from the Shevet HaLevi I heard that if you see a volcanic eruption, of course you make a bracha. And the, the Sefer Shara'ayin gives an example. He says, I also heard from Remnis and Karelitz that the examples brought in Shulchan Aruch are only examples. And an example of this would be, you wanted to know, do we have other places where Shulchan Aruch says certain things and they're only examples? Yes, the bracha Meshana Habriyos. The Mechaber says, when do you make a Meshana Habriyos? On a monkey? Let's say, did you see, Rabbi Ram, did you see uh, monkeys in Gibraltar? You make a bracha. You have to go back now. Mishana, tell your father you want to find this time business. Yeah? To make a, to make a bracha on a monkey, Mishana Abriyas. Shukhnach says two things, a monkey and an elephant. Yeah, and let's say you see uh, a three-headed dragon. Do you make a bracha? Avad, do you make a bracha? The examples in the Shukhnach are only examples. So many places can say you would make a bracha on a volcanic eruption. In fact, the reports are that the Shevet Alevi, when he went to Switzerland and he saw a waterfall, he made an Oysen Asabaratius. And that's not mentioned in Shulchan Aruch. And by the way, and it was, so you say, well maybe he made the bracha because it was big enough to be a river, technically. If you see the Mississippi River, you make Oysen Asabaratius. No, it wasn't a big waterfall. So therefore, the Shar Ha'ayin concludes, what do you do Lamaisa if you see an eclipse? It's a Suffolk bracha, because maybe, you, we, maybe we apply the rule, Ein lanu elamasha chidshu chazal, Suffolk brachas lahakel, and therefore you do not make a bracha on a eclipse. So now, the Sefer Shar Ha'ayin was written primarily about different kinds of brachas. And his conclusion is, you don't make a bracha. Why? Suffolk bracha. So I would say according to that, you're not allowed to look at the... Uh, you can't look at it. Oh, so this is not the first solar eclipse to happen. So obviously, Chazal didn't go out for the solar eclipse. Here, all these are for now. You want to know why? It's not... They, they will learn whatever. They must be, they did, right? The Rav said there was a safe rent that has... The Bottom line is, according to this Shara Ayin, according to this Sefer of Halacha, his conclusion is it's a suffake bracha, and therefore you don't make a bracha. I'm just adding, according to his take on it, you shouldn't look at it. So the question is, so why is everybody running out to see it? They should <laughs> go indoors and close the shades. So I got a hold of uh, Sefer Mesoras Moshe. Mesoras Moshe are Han Hagos of Rav Moshe Feinstein. And Rav Moshe Feinstein was asked on the first night of Sukkot, there was a partial lunar eclipse. And they asked, should you make Oysa Masabratius? Because after all, it's only a partial lunar eclipse. And Rav Moshe says, you don't make a bracha on an eclipse. Why? Because we do not find that Chazal were masaki in a bracha. So here we have it. The Paisik Adar, Rav Moshe Feinstein says, definitively, you don't now. 
One thing is, you don't go looking at the eclipse and use the Brooklyn Arab. That's one thing, I'll tell you. <laughs> the Brooklyn Arab. Because if you're going to be relying on Rav Moshe to, to make, not to make a bracha on the eclipse, you've got to follow Rav Moshe. You can't pick and choose. You can't all of a sudden say, you know, when it comes to the Arab, I'm not going to be... The, way, the only way you're allowed to look at this eclipse, if you're soimech on the place of Kadar, Rav Moshe Feinstein. Or, the truth is, that in, I have uh, all kinds of paraphernalia here. There was a journal that was published. I'm going to tell you what year it was published. This journal was published in 1962. And this journal published a narrative about a solar eclipse that happened in 1927 in Radin. And the Chafetz Chaim told everyone that it's a mitzvah to go out and to see the solar eclipse. The Chafetz Chaim said it was a mitzvah. So I, I saw that. I was thinking, why is it a mitzvah? Maybe because you're going to take Musr, you're going to think, hmm, you know, am I, you're going to learn the Gemara. The Gemara says, because we were in Masbid, a Talmud Chacham, and Na'ar Marasa Shatzaka, and Mishkav Zacha, and we're going to see the Pshat of the Maral. The Maral learns that we don't have Kavad Torah, we don't support Torah. No, the Chavetz Chaim said, very simple. In the ancient times, people thought the sun was a god. So the Chavetz Chaim wanted everyone to see the sun has no power. Look. The sun comes and all of a sudden it just disappears. The little old moon can come and completely block out the light of the sun. And the Chafetz Chaim says, from here we see that everybody has their hour and everybody's hour comes to an end. And just like the sun, the sun is standing up there in the heavens, it's shining, it's shining. Ah! Ah! Like we say, a chasan comes out, like the sun. The sun has his moment to shine. But v'zara hashamesh, uba hashamesh. And the Chavetz Chaim says, you think, you're 30 years old, you're 40 years old, you're 50 years old, you're a grois, a knacker, and you know, you're sitting at the head of the table, and you're the roish hamishbacha. Eh, one day, in a few short years, you're going to be sitting by your kid's table, and you're going to be in his house, and he's going to be the balabas, and you're going to be at the end of the table, and then you're going to be, you're not even going to be vertical, you're going to be horizontal. The lesson of the eclipse is that even if you have your moment to shine, but that moment will pass, and it comes very quickly. What about a bracha? No, no bracha is mentioned. But Lamaisa, I'm going to read to you from a translation from the Holy Yated Naman of this article, which was written in 19... What do we say? 1962, right? 1962. The elderly Chafetz Chaim sits and rests for a bit on the chair they have brought for him near the door of the building. He rests for a bit and a quiet silence surrounds him. Finally he rises and walks slowly, step by step, and returns to his house. Remendel Zaks, his son-in-law, follows behind him, as does the black-bearded Yitzchak, who carries back the chair upon which the Chavetz Chaim had sat. The elder, who is entirely purity and holiness, stops at the simple wooden table in the middle of the room and exclaims in a loud and joyous triumphant tone, Now we have all seen that the sun is indeed nothing but a created being formed and shaped by the Creator. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, listen to this. The Pasig in Kohela says, Toiv l'alechas al-beis avel, l'alechas al-beis mishteh, v'hachai yitain alibai. Both of these houses provide the same important lesson. Man is destined to die. But the house of mourning drives this lesson home more forcefully. Just as the mayor of a city knows that his days are numbered when the governor comes and takes him over, so too the people of one generation know that the people of the next, their newborn children, 
will grow, will marry, will, up, uh, will ultimately supplant them. We cannot fool ourselves into thinking there's a Chevra Starbers, there's a dying club. It's an exclusive club that we don't pay membership to. On the contrary, everyone will leave this world at one point or another, and his time in this world is limited. In the past, people believed the sun was divine, but Hashem set the cycle of the celestial spheres into motion in such a way that the sun is eclipsed by the moon and temporarily fails to shine, indicating that it too is not more than a tool in the hands of Hashem. So the Chafetz Chaim did not make any mention of the Chatoim that bring the eclipse. For the Chafetz Chaim, the Limud of the solar eclipse was that our stay in this world is temporary. And the Chafetz Chaim even said it was a mitzvah. The Chafetz Chaim said it was a mitzvah to see the eclipse. Let me see if I could quote the exact Lashon of this article. Ah! Kibezek. What's Bezek? Like lightning. Says the Chavetz Chaim, Zuhi mitzvah lirois eschacham aloika. Now, what do I take from here? The Chavetz Chaim must have held it's not a Suffolk bracha. Not like Reb Vazner. Because it was a Suffolk bracha. You can't put yourself in a matzav of Suffolk bracha to learn Musar. I don't think. Unless it's such a powerful limud ha-Musar that you're allowed to put yourself in a Suffolk. L'chayro, the Chavetz Chaim held like Rav Moshe, that definitively you do not make a bracha on a likoy ha-chama, and therefore it's, once it's mutter to see the eclipse, it's a mitzvah to see the eclipse. Now one interesting thing is, how do they look at it? Now I was wondering, did they know, you know, that they said people who looked at the eclipse without the special glasses, they have a, a, a burn on their retina. Unless you're in totality, then you could look for those few minutes. I think Without. even even in totality, there's still the, the rim. Yeah, you, there's still UV. Anyway, so I thought they didn't know. If they didn't know, so Shomer Psayim Hashem. There's an idea, you know, back in the day. But according to this holy article in the Yated, there was a shortage of glass that day in Raden. Why? Because they would take the glass shards and they would put it in the furnace and burn it, and it would turn black, and that's how they looked at the eclipse. So maybe it's a new business. Whenever you could take broken bottles, put it in a, burn it, and it talks about like there was a little bit of a fight. Who would be Zoicha to give the blackened glass to the Chavetz Chaim to look at the eclipse? The Chavetz Chaim did not have those, those sunglasses, you know? So, so if you're learning, right? So this is a mitzvah that's going to be... Mitzvah Iveras? Yeah. You want to know she'd be Mavato from Tyra? No. If you're in the middle of learning, no, but the Chavetz Chaim, uh, the Chavetz Chaim felt it was uh, to take his the city and to to witness. To be Mahar in Limud while they're looking. Yeah, look, if if a person's mamish in the base medrash, and they have to close the Gemara and get up, but it could be that it could be that most people are not able to learn mamish for two hours straight without any interruption. But you see that the Chavetz Chaim, I'm just bringing out that L'chayr, you see from the Chavetz Chaim, that it was not a Suffolk bracha. And once it's permitted to look at it, then uh, the Chavetz Chaim said it was a mitzvah to look at it. Okay, Rabbi Yisai, we, we uh, said yesterday by Shal Shudis, Hashkifa mima'oin kajcha uvarech asamcha Yisrael, that if a person humbles himself, you know, Yesterday by Shal Shudis we said from the Shlach Kadosh, the word Hashkifa is hasak yafeh, the sackcloth of the image of the eclipse is good. Chassam Soifer explained when we humble ourselves. So Chassam Soifer says when we humble ourselves because the Gemara says it comes for chait. But according to this Chafetz Chaim, it elicits humility in a much more profound way, not just because uh, we're thinking about the chatam that could have caused it, but it reminds us of our own, uh, our own mortality. According to the Chafetz Chaim, the eclipse reminds us that we are mortal, and if we're able to engender anivus, then the Chassam Soifer says, Hashkifa, Hasak, Yafa, and ultimately, Uvare Chassam Yisrael, it's a simon bracha for Klai Yisrael. Have a great day, everyone. Bracha Matzlach.